Hi, uh, this is Dr. Nurse over break. I'm going to send you a couple things to keep you thinking about organic chemistry while you're off. Um, right before we left, we were talking about a reaction called NAS, which is nucleophilic aromatic substitution, as opposed to electrophilic aromatic substitution, which was a kind of our primary focus. All right, so before you left, I gave you a mechanism where you had an aromatic ring and it had a fluorine on it and two nitro groups. This is what I believe I did right before. Okay, we left and I was adding to this sodium methoxide or something like that. Okay, or some kind of ethoxide. Now, um, what's different about nucleophilic aromatic substitution from electrophilic aromatic su substitution is of course, first of all, it involves a nucleophile or a base, which is a base. Um, the second thing is there has to be some kind of leaving group on the aromatic ring because in electrophilic aromatic substitution, what you're substituting for is H+. And think about this, the nucleophile would have to substitute for H- because it's a nucleophilic reaction. Um, the other thing that's really different about it is that it's, the reaction is facilitated by having electron withdrawing groups, ortho and or para, to the leaving group. And the leaving group is much more versatile in the sense that the most important aspect of the leaving group is that there be a very strong delta plus. Not that the leaving group be a great leaving group in its own, own right, and it has to do with the mechanism. Um, so it's, it's really like the opposite world. Everything that applied that was sort of negative in electrophilic aromatic substitution is sort of positive in nucleophilic aromatic substitution. And for this reaction to work, the conditions really have to be just right. Again, very, very polar good leaving group. Electron withdrawing groups, ortho and or para to that group. Even just one will do it. And some kind of a strong nucleophile. Um, the reaction is not a one-step reaction. Generally speaking, you do not get direct SN2 on um, an aromatic ring. One of the arguments that is given is the idea that nucleophilic uh, substitutions occur best at 180 degrees away from the leaving group and 180 degrees away from an sp2 leaving group is actually inside the ring. So it's kind of a ridiculous notion. Um, generally speaking too, um, you know, just the idea of a substitution on an, uh, generally speaking, Substitution reactions do not occur, direct substitutions on sp2 carbons, as you're going to see is a theme throughout the rest of the semester. All right, so how does this mechanism work? It's a two-step process. As I said, the most important thing is that this be very delta plus. So what happens first? You want to break this up into its components. This is a very strong base. By this point in this course, you should be able to tell me why that's a strong base. Concentrated charge on oxygen okay not the strongest base but it's pretty strong um, this will go in and it'll hit this carbon but it doesn't directly substitute for it instead what happens is the the pi system gets involved okay and we form what is called a meisenheimer complex and a meisenheimer complex looks like this okay there's a negative here, I'm, I'm going to show all the resonance forms, or at least some of them. All right, you should learn how to draw your nitro groups properly. They're going to be an important component of your life from now on. Okay. Um, so this is one of the resonance forms, and if you work through your resonance forms, you will discover that you could draw a hybrid that looks like this. Okay, negative charge all the way around this ring. The negative charge would get delocalized out onto these nitro groups. That's why they're so important. Same deal here. Out here, there's a negative out there. So the delta minus, you should be able to draw resonance forms that go around the ring and onto the nitro group. So you start to understand why the nitro groups being ortho and or para are very important. Meta, think about what it would be like if the nitro groups were meta. You would discover you would not be able to place the charge on the meta position. So the reaction kind of goes through this lower energy intermediate that has resonance stabilization. Again, it's called a Meissen 
Heimer intermediate to avoid that direct hit, which is so high energy, okay? And then what happens? Well, then the negative charge comes in and the leaving group leaves. So notice the leaving group is not involved, is not coming off in the rate determining step. This is the rate determining step. The most important thing is the polarity. And when the group leaves, we have a substitution. Now, synthetically, this gives you a great entrance into, so what is it doing again? It's re-aromatizing. This gives you a great entrance into oxygen groups on aromatic rings. But notice it's restricted in the sense that you need some kind of a electron withdrawing group. How much time? That's five and That's only five three, minutes? Five and three quarters. Really? Okay. So um, let's talk a little bit about organic synthesis. If you were going to use this um, synthetically, supposing um, <clears throat> you wanted to make... You want to synthesize. I'll try to do a synthesis with each of these because I know we're all obsessed with synthesis now. But supposing I did want to synthesize um, this. I'm going to be a little more elaborate here. Um, supposing I wanted to synthesize this, okay? Um, one thing we could do. And, and let's say we want to synthesize it from benzene. We're going, you know, back to air, fire, and water, and methane. Okay, and then you can use any inorganic <clears throat> reagent you want. So this is incorporating, um, or we're going to be incorporating EAS and NAS. So the thing that you don't have the ability to do is introduce oxygen. Okay, but you can put halogens on aromatic rings. Okay. So the question would be, with this, would you nitrate this first or would you halogenate it first? You would actually halogenate it first because even though halogen is um, a deactivating group, it is an OP director. So you would want to put the halogen first and put the nitrate, nitros in second, sort of analogous to um, the way we, we made TNT in class. Okay, so how would I do the synthesis? I'm not going to do this synthesis backwards. This is really a very forward, there's a very forward way to do this, and I think you'll see it better. The first thing I would do is an EAS, chlorination. So I would add chlorine in the presence of, say, uh, aluminum trichloride or iron trichloride, and I would chlorinate that ring. Now remember, chlorine is an OP director because of its lone pairs but it's deactivating. And we explained the, the idea that we really don't get terrific overlap between the 3p orbital of a chlorine atom and the 2p orbitals of the aromatic ring. So it's kind of like the push and pull are getting more balanced here, but it still is an OP director. So if you wanted to put the nitro groups in, you would add HNO3 and H2SO4, and you would do this twice and you would get among your products, there would be another product, but one of your products would be this. And if you're really practicing, you should be writing your mechanisms out. Okay, this would probably be the major product if you controlled the nitration. Now once I got that, I would able to be able to get, introduce the oxygen. So one thing I could do <coughs> is take this um, aromatic ring, and I am very careful when I do these. And I'm gonna show you a different way to do it, a little different from what I just did when I went over the mechanism. Okay, I would take, so, so there's my leaving group. I would try to do an NAS reaction. And so for example, just to make things a little more interesting, I'm gonna use sodium hydroxide, you know, maybe in something like DMSO or some kind of an aromatic solvent that wouldn't react. Um, take this oxygen, and this would undergo an NAS reaction. Again, this is not direct, okay? I'm going to write this, not direct. NAS. Why is it NAS? Leaving group, nitro groups, ortho and para to the leaving group, hydroxide coming in. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so that was not meant to be a mechanism, okay? It's an NAS mechanism. All right, so my question is, how would I go, and I'm almost done, 
how would I go from this? And I can tell you guys are starting to like synthesis, which is really good. How would I go from this to this? And this is reviewing old stuff. Okay. So how would I link this O to this C? The C, the O is going to have to be negative and the C is going to have to be positive. So one way you could do this is you could rip that hydrogen off. If you rip the hydrogen off, you'll have the anion. Okay. So I could take this and add your old buddy sodium hydride. In this case, sodium hydroxide would actually be strong enough to get the job done. This would rip this H off. Remember, that is a pretty acidic hydrogen. Think about why that hydrogen's acidic. It has to do with resonance, which is our main theme of the semester right now. Okay, once I got this, what I'd want to react it with is, or right, NO2s, forgot about those guys. What I'd want to react it with is methyl bromide. So my question is, how do you make the methyl bromide? What you do, is take methane and you'd brominate it. That's kind of like our standby when we've got in the presence of light. That's our standby when we want to brominate some, get a halogen on. And then this reaction would be, right, this is minus, this is delta plus. That would be an SN2 reaction and that would make the desired product. Now I did that a little differently just so that you would start thinking about it a little bit. Okay. So that is our, our little quick tutorial on nucleophilic aromatic substitution and a little synthesis. Okay, see you in class.